Many experts are offering various prospects in the face of the COVID-19 situation. And I'm so curious about how the teacher will see it. But the COVID-19 crisis is an unprecedented situation for us, so there will be no experts. And even more, I'm not an infectious disease scientist. I'm not a preventive medicine professor. But what I want to say today is how we view this politically, internationally, politically, or socially. There is a famous columnist named Thomas Friedman in the New York Times. And because of the corona crisis, so-called VC, as before corona and after corona. So, as we divide into Vichy and add after Jesus, before Jesus, Vichy and Ek are becoming a breakthrough in the history of civilization. So let's study it together today, because it has a lot of influence on us. I think this lecture will be a guide for the viewers who are watching the show. I think it'll be a good opportunity to think about it together. Teacher, what is the topic of today's lecture? The topic of today's lecture is the world after COVID-19 world. Is it a crisis? Is it an opportunity? Now, when we look back, the epidemic was anything but unfamiliar. With the history of mankind, contagiousness began and the rise and fall of empires were determined by infectious diseases and civilization was changed. Scholars have warned us about this in advance. If you look at a man like William McNeil at the University of Chicago, his book Infectious Diseases and Human History makes a very interesting argument. The epidemic started with humans. Humans start raising Levistock. Levistock to grow separately from humans, and I think there are infectious diseases that humans do not have. I think it determines the trajectory of human civilization. So the Han Chinese plague reduced the empire from 60 million to 20 million. The fall of the Roman Empire is also contagious and connects. It is argued that two major infectious diseases came between 160 AD and 100 AD, facilitating the fall of the Roman Empire. Then, even in the Inca Empire, about a hundred Spanish conquistadors went and spread the epidemic and destroyed it all. And 20 million people, like the Aztecs, were reduced to 1.6 million. The epidemic eventually affected human society. In the case of the plague in Europe in the mid 14th century, 25 million people, one third of the population of Europe died, but it worked positively. Agricultural capitalism developed through this. Because a lot of farmers have died, so we have to industrialize them and move on. Those opened up agricultural capitalism and eventually agricultural capitalism became industrial capitalism, financial capitalism, and capitalism developed in Europe. So these big events brought about a huge change. It worked as an opportunity. And then in 1918, the Spanish flu, which was all over the world, almost 50 million people died. But this incident led to the creation of the concept of public health. What do you think about the reason why COVID-19 spread so fast unlike the previous epidemic? It's another face of globalization. If you look at the book Thomas Friedman wrote, The World is Flat, How to Organize Globalization. Farther, faster, deeper, and cheaper. Globalization is the spread of goods and goods. And if you reverse the globalization of the blessing, the coronavirus is spreading 
farther, deeper, or cheaper. Our flights are now very well developed, both in terms of flights and in terms of technology. The interconnected network is like goods and goods are moving, and eventually barriers are moving. An editor named John Orser wrote an interesting column. The corona crisis raises basic problems with Western moral philosophy. What are some of the philosophical issues in the West? The first is the theory. Here we hear John Rawls, a professor of philosophy at Harvard University. John Rawls wrote a book called Justice in Definitive English, which is like this. Let's think about what kind of country to create with a veil of ignorance. What kind of constitution are we going to make except for men and women, the rich and the poor, race and education? Then everyone will be the first to ask for help to the most difficult people because you'll get help when you're in the most difficult position. If you look at the stationery of our Orient, you will argue that you should first help the most difficult person when you make a constitution. In the end, that should be the basis of the political community. In the COVID-19 crisis, let's not see everything and deal with the most critical patients first except for whether it costs money or not. On the other hand, there are people who completely criticize this. It's a utilitarian approach. There are people like John Stuart Mill and Jeremy Bentham and what the argument is, the greatest happiness of the greatest number of people, that's what the state should do. What the state has to do is to make sure that even at the expense of the few, it benefits the many. And the most important way to formulate it is to analyze the cost effectiveness. That's a very traditional ethical dilemma in the medical community. I mean, there's a war. Who should we treat first? It's called a triage. You have to fix it quickly and go out and fix it quickly and find someone who can fight. On the other hand, let's leave the dead alone. Ultimately, the theory of survival of the fittest is that those who can go out and fight are saved and those who will die are left alone. It's an incredibly utilitarian interpretation. Then, when the corona crisis comes, we don't have to save the elderly, so let's let them die and save the young first. That's what utilitarianism is. Italy is a representative place. Sir, I'm curious about the Swedish case, because it's a country that has publicly announced that it will take a different route than other countries. What we call it is herd immunity, which is called the herd immunity. Which means that 80 to 90 percent of people in a particular community get COVID-19, and if antibodies get caught, there is no one to attack anymore. That means that you have herd immunity, so it costs a lot less. 
Should we look at it as utilitarianism when we look at the cost? First of all, there are test kits, so it's good to select them, but it's hard to respond to a large number of confirmed cases without being selected. So the most economical way is for everyone to Do you get accept caught. that? The people? In some ways, it may have made a strategic choice from a quarantine perspective, but the Swedish people prefer it if they want to do normal activities, including young people. In order to live freely in the short term, the risk of coronavirus has increased. Anyway, it's not that you don't think about it, but you think that you acted according to your moral philosophy, right? Well, the history of mankind is the history of experimentation. There's no answer. You try various things in a given situation, and you develop a trial and error. There's no answer to that. But we're going to go further. It's a philosophy called liberalism. There are philosophers like Hayek and Robert Nozick. He has now written a book criticizing the book Justice. Liberalism and liberalism must be distinguished. Leave this liberalism to the individual. Personal freedom is more important than anything else. Individuals do everything on their own. Why the state intervenes? It's very much liberal. The government is blocking it. So why is it blocking it? Release the blockade. You come out with a gun and make a claim. Give me freedom or death. Even if I die, I die. The government won't die. Just guarantee individual freedom and rights. There are many people with that philosophical creed. This corona incident has had a lot of influence on international politics. First of all, what is the concept of security? So far, the concept of our security is that ultimately protecting our survival from external physical aggression has been the most important security. Military security and economic security that guarantees our prosperity and well-being from economic shocks were important. And I once talked about oil security in the event of an oil crisis and food security in the event of a food shortage. But I was not interested in anything related to the epidemic. But why? AIDS, SARS and MERS were spread out, but we manage them well and solve them. So, it's not a realm of national security, it's a realm of public health. But this COVID-19 outbreak, the phantom, called the epidemic, has really become as important a security issue as military security, economic security, and security. That's why the concept of security changes. And if we don't see it, I'm talking about national security. In English, the state is the basic unit of national city, but what I showed this time is security. It cannot be confined. Global security is more important because no matter how hard you work with Korea to quarantine, you will have no choice but to come in if it comes from another side. So COVID-19 is a more difficult issue for the National Security Council because the security of individual countries that have to be eradicated at the global level can be improved. And here's another interesting thing. The most problematic things in the world are the World War I, the World War II, 
and then the 911 incident, all of which are made by humans. But this is made by nature. It's something that nature to human can withstand in a way an alien invasion. That's right. What's important is that, in the end, this concept of national security must be viewed in global security. What does this mean? Bill Gates came out and talked about the community of human destiny. Then it's not just Bill Gates. Many scholars, journalists, and intellectuals have said that the COVID-19 problem is a problem for the human community and that humanity is a common destiny. In the end, when we respond to the coronavirus, it turns out that an international cooperative approach is quite important rather than an individual country-centered approach. When this happens, the global community should come together and fight, but if you look at it now, there should be no leadership and some fighting. But what I see now is that there is no leadership and we are busy criticizing each other. But where other. does that leadership come from? It's from company. Yes, I felt it more in the company. People like Bill Gates say they'll spend 300 billion won on vaccine development. And then we, Sun Jianghui, already have a lot of people saying that we'll provide a million test kits at the beginning of the crisis. Oh, that's a cool word. What's more interesting is that the mask sent by a person with a great forehead is a mask made in Korea. Oh, the mask that came to seal sent me a mask produced in Japan and told me not to fight. No, think about it, I mean. It would be nice if the leaders of the country played such a role, and people like Bill Gates, Sun Jung Yui, and Ma Yun were imaginative. I think I really saw the bare faces of political leaders this time. Good point is a very good point. This uncertainty in international politics brought about by the corona crisis comes from here. When we respond to the coronavirus, we have to track patients and have all the medical records and if the authorities have them. Isn't George Orwell going to be a big brother? As he said in a novel called 1984, that's what Western criticism of China is now. China is planning to use all of its artificial intelligent artificial intelligence systems to recognize iris, face, and fingerprints to have all 1.4 billion people. So this is, after all, trying to make a communist dictatorship even more sustainable. There is a positive aspect of us analyzing our movements and establishing a surveillance system. But if a dictatorship is established without democratic control, there is a problem that we cannot escape from the surveillance system forever. So we have no choice but to undermine our freedom. What surprised me was that while conducting epidemiological investigations in Korea, we quickly identified the person's movements through situs, payment details, and bis. In fact, I was afraid of such rapid extraction of information. Is there a device in place to control these things? That's right. I was worried about that. We are a living democracy, and the regime can change at any time. And if we see a new dictatorial remnant through control and surveillance, we can change it. That's why a democratic system is important. While I was working this time, I think this surveillance authoritarianism was called... Ah, it's already there? It originally has a calm root. But I think that the people may have caught it this time. In a way, 
I think it's better that we're aware of this situation that's not taking root anymore. That's a good point. I can keep him in check. And I think surveillance authoritarianism is a little too popular to take root in our country because they're not that easy. I think that's the characteristic of getting up when you cross the line. People are interested in politics. If there is a people who are awake, they can watch everything. But it's different from before. It's a society that can spread to millions in real time if you make an important complaint with the truth on YouTube, which is full of information, since is activated and has 500 viewers. So I think that's a disadvantage, but that is the power of democracy. Because I believe in citizens and because I believe in a constitutional democracy, I think the reproducibility of surveillance authoritarianism is low. In fact, I agree with you. In the past, I had too much personal information about my social security number. I had doubts and resistance about whether this condition, which is generally open to the public, was right. But after this incident, I thought that this system itself was not negative. Then let's go over here. What kind of response system is actually desirable? Arnold Toynbee said that history is a repeat of challenge and retribution. Viruses are challenge. Then the important thing is how to respond. It means that the way to fight is different from country to country. Let's go to the first one. First, China shut down 10 million Wuhan cities and opened them in 76 days. And it was forced to close the area. Is that a good thing? There is a lot of criticism from the international community right now. What did the US do? In the beginning, President Trump has nothing to worry about. It's like a flu, and it's going to pass soon, so he takes a passive response in the beginning. And then watch the US citizens do it. I'm asking for freedom or death to die with a month-long lock-in. Now that I did that, the number of confirmed cases tablis. Israel was said to have become a good role model at first. But Israel was completely shut down as soon as it was created. But eventually... Israel is also breaking through. And Israel is having a very hard time. So containment is not the answer. And then fourth, Africa, South America, it's very difficult right now, since the national system is not in place and the medical system is very backward. I think there will be a disaster in human society if the international community does not help now. After that, the Korean model became the most successful model. It eventually became the most successful model by dealing with the COVID-19 situation in a democratic and transparent way without a ban on entry or a regional blockade. Then what does the success model of Korea mean? Korea had the basics. Infrastructure such as medical insurance was well equipped. That's the most Korean important thing. Korean students who do not have medical insurance in the US have to wait more than a week for examination first and pay $15,000 if confirmed. I can't get it even if I want it's to. It's really expensive. They say you have to spend tens of millions of won. In Korea, medical infrastructure is well equipped pharmacies, hospitals, and hospitals are everywhere, easy to go, and simple medical care systems are well equipped. Next, we were able to cope with this well because we suffered in the past. There was a lesson during SARS and MERS, and the basic manuals for the quarantine system, quarantine system, and movement tracking were all in place, and we followed those manuals. And then there was the dedication of very good doctors, nurses, and volunteers.
The last one is the government and the private sector. In particular, the government and private companies' participation moved so quickly and then the government moved so I'm quickly. I'm really flabbergasted. But who manages the coordination of the whole thing? Anyway, the state did it. In this regard, Korea is an example of smart state intervention. What will happen to our role if this happens is what comes next. A country's national power is considered in three ways. The first is hard power, which is a type of national power with economic power, military power, science and technology. Next, soft power is to see how attractive a country becomes, is recognized by the international community, and is highly orthodox. So it is to see intangible national power. However, smart power is the integration of tangible and intangible national power to respond to external changes very actively, flexibly, and effectively. It's the ability to make decisions. But in this case of Korea, our economic power is 12th and our military power is 6th to 7th, not the top country. But there was smart power this time. The state intervened very smart this time, bringing a twist to the corona crisis and creating a new international standard. It was made because of smart power, which is what greatly enhances our soft right. power. If that happens, as I said earlier, if you create an international organization and jointly respond to infectious diseases, the Korean doctor's so. voice will yeah. probably be the loudest. Starting with diagnostic kits, quarantine, quarantine, and tracking movements will not be easy in other countries. But our government has already made a manual, so we are sharing it with the international community here. I think everyone will be curious about what to do in Korea if there's an infectious disease or epidemic next Okay, time. call us. It now establishes itself as a country that has contributed to the international community. Therefore, we have always played a role in receiving help from the international community in the structure of division between North and South Korea. And since we can share our role model with the international community for the first time, I think it will be significant this time. Teacher, if our country cooperates with the international community and soft power increases, can racism and other things be alleviated? We have to bring it up on the agenda. Not only the corona crisis, but also the continued increase in soft power will raise our voices in the free international community. For infectious diseases, climate change, proliferation of nuclear weapons, racism and cultural hostility. And if we come up with a new agenda, we come up with solutions and we lead the international community. We'll be respected like the Scandinavian countries like Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. That's why I'm thinking of blessing in disguise, Seyum Juma. Opening up the possibility of a twist through the COVID-19 crisis.